So the second effect that we have seen for growth hormone is to enhance fat utilization for energy. This is very interesting. So listen careful. So growth hormone enhances fat utilization for energy um, as the following. So first, it enhances the release of fatty acid from adipose tissue. Again, adipose tissue, these are fatty stores. So what growth hormone is doing is to break down the, uh, uh, the fat stores to release fatty acid. So when you release this fatty acid, eventually you increase concentration of fatty acid in the body fluids, for example, in the circulation, in blood or in plasma. So you increase concentration of fatty acid. And then this fatty acid will be converted to acetyl CoA. And growth hormone enhances the conversion of fatty acid to acetyl CoA. And again, it is the acetyl CoA that is being uh, that can be used to produce energy. So, enhancement of utilization of acetyl CoA for energy production is also facilitated by growth hormone. So, you can see that all these processes break down of fatty acid from the adipose tissue, thereby increasing free fatty acid in the body fluids, and eventually using these free fatty acids. Um, or converting these fatty acids to acetyl CoA and then utilizing this acetyl CoA to produce the energy is actually the function of growth hormone. So basically the net effect is burning fat. Growth hormone facilitate fat burn within the body. So if you combine the two effects, facilitation of fat burning effect of growth hormone as well as, well as protein building effect of growth hormone and if you take example of the body basically what growth hormone is doing is to increase lean body mass because you're burning out fat but you're building muscle at the same time you're also building bones we are going to see later how uh, growth hormone is actually influencing or facilitating uh, bone growth so the net effect of growth hormone increase in lean body mass because we are burning out fat and we are building muscles we are building bones so let's talk about the ketogenic effect of growth hormone and this is one of the biological effect of growth hormone when there is some kind of imbalance in the levels of growth hormone within the circulation or availability of growth hormone so if you have excessive amount of growth hormone in the adipose tissue as we said, one of the effects of growth hormone is actually to break down adipose tissue to release free fatty acid. So you will have release of fatty acid from the adipose tissue, and in so doing, you will have increased concentration of fatty acid in the body fluids. But because this is excessive, usually this fatty acid that have been uh, released by breaking down the adipose tissue is usually being used to produce energy. But in this case now, the amount of fatty acid or the level of fatty acid is so high that it cannot be used, uh, not all the fatty acid can be used to produce energy. So some of the remaining fatty acid will actually be converted to ketone bodies. And a good example of the ketone bodies is also what is known as the acetoacetate. And this process occur in the liver. So at the end of the day, you have large amount of acetoacetate being formed by the liver. And this is known as ketogenesis. And the whole effect is known as the ketogenic effect of growth hormone. And this is basically when you have imbalance of growth hormone, when you have excessive growth hormone, so you have excessive um, breakdown of fat and you have increased fatty acid in the circulation in such a way that not all these fatty acid can be used to produce energy. So the excess fatty acids are being converted by the liver to ketone bodies. And an example of that ketone body is what is known as acetoacetate, acetoacetic acid. Again, we said one of the effects of growth hormone is to decrease carbohydrate utilization. How does this happen? So one, you have decreased glucose uptake in tissues. So by so doing, glucose is not getting into the cells. So this is the effect of growth hormone to decrease glucose uptake in tissues. Number two, you have increased glucose production by the liver. So you are restricting glucose to get into the tissue. At the same time, you are um, producing more glucose from the liver. 
So the net effect, you will have increased blood glucose. So it is the increased blood glucose that will stimulate the beta cells to produce insulin. So another effect of growth hormone is to increase insulin secretion. So this is indirect effect of growth hormone. So directly, growth hormone decreases glucose uptake in tissues and it enhances the liver to produce more glucose. The net effect of these two is increased blood glucose and the increased blood glucose will stimulate the beta cells to produce insulin. So you have high levels of insulin, but because you have high levels of growth hormone, glucose cannot, cannot be taken into the cells. So at the end of the day, you have high levels of insulin, but you have high levels of glucose in the blood. This state is what is known as growth hormone induced insulin resistance because you have high levels of insulin, but glucose is not being taken into the cell. So basically you have a state of uh, insulin resistance. And because this is caused by growth hormone, we call it growth hormone induced insulin resistance. For this reason, sometimes growth hormone can be diabetogenic. When we say diabetogenic, we are talking about any factor that can actually facilitate or can cause or can increase risk of getting diabetes mellitus. So all the biological factors or environmental factors that eventually can actually predispose or can increase the risk of someone to get diabetes, they're known as diabetogenic. And as you've seen, uh, growth hormone, excessive or dysregulation of growth hormone, uh, you have decreased glucose uptake in tissue, you have enhanced the glucose production by the liver, you have increased insulin secretion that does not affect glucose uptake. At the end of the day, you have high levels of blood glucose and you have a state of insulin resistance that have been induced by growth hormone and because insulin resistance is a hallmark of type 2 diabetes then we say that growth hormone is actually diabetogenic because it can induce a state of insulin resistance which can eventually cause diabetes mellitus so one point that we need to remember is the fact that insulin and carbohydrates are necessary for growth promotion action of growth hormone that means we know that growth hormone is the main hormone that facilitate growth that promote growth but this growth cannot happen if you don't have insulin if you don't have carbohydrates why one reason is the fact that you need glucose to provide energy that is needed for growth. We know that growth is some kind of metabolism, it's a, um, anabolism, and this is a process. And if it is a process, it requires energy. So part of this energy comes from glucose. This is the reason why for growth to happen, you need glucose. And two, we know that the effect of insulin is actually to facilitate movement of amino acid into the cells. And we know that for growth to happen, you need to have amino acids getting into the cells. And then these amino acids are being incorporated to build the proteins. And then the proteins are building the body. So you need insulin for the amino acid to get in. So for the growth hormone to promote growth, you need insulin and carbohydrate. That is a take-home message. And you do have the reasons why this is the way it is.